let's uh, welcome in maybe the biggest Nets fan on the Empty the Bench podcast network, somebody that you we all know pretty well, and that mm -hmm. is Mr. Nick Morgison, who is going to join us. There he is. Nick, welcome. How are you? Oh, I'm frustrated with the Nets, but that's a whole different issue we'll get into. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but, um, you know, when we look at this game, uh, this was a series that before it started, I thought had seven games written all over it, and I still do. I mean, this was one Same that – Yeah, this was, this was one where you could see the teams being – you know, pretty evenly matched. And even at some point you look at the Nets being a seventh seed and you're like, wow, this is a team that's really the seventh seed in all of this. But let me start with the uh, resident Nets fan here, Nick. Uh, before this game and in this series, what were you thinking going into it? See, the weird part is there was a misconception on the part of Vegas odds. Everyone said, oh my God, they're, they should win the title. Uh, they should be everywhere. That with KD and Kyrie, well, with dealing with all the vaccine drama, and that's not even what we're talking about now. But everyone thinks that they're just going to run through the whole entire playoffs and that they're somehow going to win because KD is going to lead the way. Well, let's put a kibosh. Let's take a, put our foot on the brakes. The Celtics are a great team. People are forgetting about that. Jason Tatum, probably one of the youngest up-and-coming stars in the NBA. People forget. But it's all about the Nets. And unfortunately, it's about the Nets in the wrong spotlight. Yeah, definitely. And I think another reason too why you give the net why a lot of people were favoring the Nets too. You know, Kyrie, you said KD and Kyrie were both playing together finally almost every game. Uh, the big injury to Robert Williams on the Celtics side of things, so that could have been something else as well. But Hank, when you look at the game yesterday and this series in general, what were you thinking about it? I mean, I was pretty much like, "Wow, Celtics are really." dominating in the first half and then all of a sudden I had a feeling though that the Celtics wouldn't get too comfortable because at the end of the day now that the Nets finally have Kyrie and KD playing together I figured they would mount a good rally which they did but it's a real shame because this was definitely I'm gonna go out on a limb and say this might have been one of if not the greatest game ones of the first rounds that I've ever seen I mean two teams that probably would have been I don't know about conference finals, but at the very least, the semifinals any other year. But yet it gets ruined because of stupid drama where where Kyrie just can't, like, ignore stupid hecklers by doing this thing, like, behind his head. By the way, that was the clean version for those of you. <laughs> but I, I'm sorry. Put the videotape on that. <laughs> that's ridiculous. Like, come on. Like, we're talking about that instead of the fact that Marcus Morris, who – was a notable ball hog actually passed the ball to Jason Tatum for a change. And Jason Tatum got one of the more classic layout buzzer beaters in NBA history. But instead we're talking about Kyrie being an idiot and Kyrie, like the moron he is, has to take the spotlight all for himself. Well, that's the problem here. So I know that's what pissed me off about the whole thing. What, what people don't realize, and for whether you're the average NBA fan or the typical NBA fan, Kyrie Irving is just in the spotlight the whole entire year. He didn't care. It started from day one when he didn't make it to training camp because he refused the COVID vaccine. Now, I'm not put politics aside. I'm not even talking about that. I'm just talking about the generality of the NBA rules that asked for the COVID vaccine. So we already knew he was a headache. Then you had New York and uh, Mayor Eric Adams bending backwards to let him to play, and he's still making the spotlight for himself with fans. Now, what other people don't know is Kyrie was on the Celtics. That's why Celtics fans don't like him. He came out in Boston with his uh, smoked curry around the court. That's a whole different issue for a whole nother day because he had a, with all his uh, religious values, like uh, christening the court before the game. But that's neither here nor there. But it's just enough take your name out of the spotlight no if your spotlight should be on the court not off it well i'm sure up in boston they're talking even today about uh the game winner i think also you know it depends on where you're coming from but like you said nick you know this is just this is Kyrie being Kyrie. this is typical with him it's not even just this year i mean we can go back years and years and years and that's why i've said for the longest time when there was the possibility of Kyrie going to the knicks i'm like no Keep him far away from MSG because oh, um, not look, there's nothing. Good. Well, there's nothing. Um, it's not even about the the talent because look, Kyrie had 18 points in the fourth quarter. That's really what we should be talking about. 
Fine. You said it in the minute. You were really accurate about this. We should be talking about the 18-point fourth quarter, but in essence, like Hank said, we're talking about flipping the bird. Well, because Can I, I also add that he had a clutch shot that's gonna that got one up because of Jason Tatum. Right. Yeah. No, it's absolutely. I mean, I look. I saw uh, KD and Kyrie torch the Knicks when the Knicks were up double digits in their meetings this year. So I mean, they have the ability to come back. They still have the ability to win. I think the Nets are missing a couple of pieces, uh, even with those two. And you're starting to see this really more and more in the NBA. You know, we talk. Oh, we, we've always talked in the past about having a big three. I, I think the big three doesn't work in this NBA anymore. I think you need two, I think one, maybe two stars and valuable role players that, that work out because look, look at the Nets. I think are a perfect example of that. You know, they've got KD and Kyrie, but they're still missing some other pieces. A Ben Simmons like would actually have helped in that spot yesterday. And uh, I should say on uh, Sunday, but when you look at it, um, they're even talking about Ben Simmons returning possibly later on in the series, but how much of a factor can he really be has, considering that he hasn't played this entire year? That's the tough part. That's the whole Kyrie Irving experience all over again. Not having the vaccine. He sat out for, what, 50-something games before he finally saw the court? I mean, I love how people, and I said this on Empty the Bench on Saturday, I love when people are sitting on their couch in their mother's basement eating mac and cheese, and they don't understand how an athlete has to train to be in a game. When we talked about the MLB lockout, they sat out for 100 days. You expect these guys to come back and be pristine right on the, on the spot? You can't be. For the NBA, it's the same thing. When you sit out for that long period of time, whether it's for dumb reasons or it's for health reasons, you still have to build up to get to that point. Yeah, you're seeing that there. You're seeing that down in New Orleans with the Pelicans now who are in. I mean, they've been, and I know we're going to get to the series in just a moment here, but you talk, you see that with them with uh, Zion. But yeah, it, it's it's tricky, and I think this is where I think Steve Nash is getting a little bit too much of the blame here because he's had to deal with a whirlwind of events this year. Whether it was the Kyrie situation, whether it was James Harden, I mean, it's very like we said, like I said before, chemistry in the NBA is so important. I, I think team chemistry means more in the NBA than it does in any other sport. And when, you have, and when you have to rotate lineups because Kyrie cannot play in home games or James Harden can't play or, you know, oh, these KD. Players, KD being out too. Yeah. For six, because he's been hurt or, you know, you also have these players talk about load management and don't get me started with load management. Um, it, it gets to be a problem. And, I think Steve Nash has done a tremendous job this year considering all the, the headache and hassle that this team has had. I'll go one step further, Johnny, to make your to make your point sound even smarter, which is Steve Nash is a figurehead coach for the Nets organization. Steve Nash has no business being a head coach. The Brooklyn Nets were looking to put a name, whether it was a player. They didn't want to pay the coach. They were too busy paying the big-name guys to be on the court, which they can't stay on the court, as we've proven, they didn't want to put a, a, a veteran coach because KD and Kyrie had a say in who the next head coach was, and they went to the Brooklyn Nets ownership, and they said, we want Steve Nash. Yeah, yeah. It, it kind of reminds me also, you know, this whole thing with them, like what, what the Knicks went through when they got Carmelo Anthony because, you know, they had Anthony and they had Stoudemire, but they didn't really have any other pieces around them to really work. So I, I think, though, when you look at this, this series – look, going forward is going to go six or seven. I don't think there's any way you don't see this happening this long. But The Nets uh, are not going to lose home games, uh, I'm telling you right now. if So it's going to go at least five, maybe six, at least just on home games alone from both teams. It's a matter of who can steal a game on the other team's home court. Yeah, that, that's for I, sure. I completely agree with that. I think, like, like I said, if there's any team that could have been a bad matchup for the Celtics, and I don't care if the Celtics won yesterday, I still still feel – actually, no, I don't really know if so much for the Celtics. I think really more for any of the top teams. I think the Nets are probably the worst possible first-round matchup, and big reason for that, got to be KD. And, I'd say and definitely all, the KD factor. And also, if Kyrie can get out of his own head – and out of his own ego, and actually play the way he knows how to play. If you remember when he was with Cleveland, he hit the game-winning shot against the Warriors in the NBA Finals. He was the guy that was really leading the team, not LeBron. Then if we got that guy, this team, can you imagine how dangerous this team would actually be? 
Well, I think I don't think it's the, really the, the problem about the Kyrie the player. I think it's the person. That's that's. But that's really the problem. problem. Kyrie the person is affecting Kyrie the player. Well, yeah. I'll tell you what was crazy though, and he said this, and people have said this too. The hecklers, I think, even made Kyrie play better because he just kept going off and off. I mean, he had 18 points in the fourth quarter. What I think the problem the Nets are running into is, and I know we're going to dive a little bit more into Kyrie in a second. I think the biggest problem the Nets are running into is when the majority of your shots are being taken by Durant and Irving, that's where you run into a problem because you need that third or fourth player to really to really be there. We've seen that even in the, the teams, whether it was the LeBron, the three, the um the three way guys in um Miami. Oh, in Miami. Yeah. Yeah. Whether it was the big three in Miami, they had, you know, Udonis Haslam step up, whether it was uh, in other in other teams as well that supposedly had a big two or a big three, they've had other players make big shots because they're always guarding they're always guarding the, the big players. I think the Miami Heat big three was different because those three guys had three different components. You look at LeBron. LeBron is the big time scorer. Bosch was the elbow shooter, and D Wade was the point guard. That made sense in a three way situation. When you look at when it was originally KD, James Harden, and Kyrie Irving. Kyrie Irving was the point guard. Okay. The shoot the shooting guard. But if you look at KD and you look at James Harden, you have two very aggressive styles that need the basketball on their own to be successful. And that does not work in a big three situation. Those three guys in Miami, they knew how to spread the court. And that's why they won. For sure. Yeah, yep. you're 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 right. Like I said, that's why I think chemistry means mm -hmm. more than just the names. And so look at the Warriors see. too. That was a team that had great chemistry. That's why they were so successful for all those years. And also, yeah. and also like with a D Wade in Miami, it's the same thing with Steph Curry in Golden State. He was the point guard. He was the lead okay. guy. Draymond was the aggressive defender, but could make the baskets. Clay was your big time shooter from mid range to three point, and Katie was your big time scorer. They all had different roles, and that's why they meshed together. That team was stacked. That, that, were, that Warriors team. Was and they didn't even win in the record regular season year. They were yeah. so fun to watch all those years, even though I hated when even though I hated when Kevin Durant joined that team. Well, because Kevin Durant sold his soul. That's what. Uh, yeah, exactly. That's and he turned played. into a snake. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Let's let's talk about Kyrie here a little bit more, because I want I, I can't I, I look at this situation that happened as it came across my feed on Sunday night. And watching the the reaction, whether it was on social media or on TV, was what really aggravated me. First off, for there to be tweets out saying that Kyrie was, quote-unquote, messing around with the Celtics fans. No. First, messing around. It, messing around with the Celtics fans. I mean, are you kidding me? He wasn't messing around. That's typical Kyrie Irving shtick. To be okay, quite honest, so messing around is just deciding to flip the bird of fans, and yeah, that's, that's which is that. look. I, I you, I don't know. If people in this air know my mindset with fan, with with athletes tech, attacking fans. It's a no win strategy. It's not smart. It's just dumb. The unless fans, unless the, they do something stupid first. If they are, if it is a, if they are sending a derogatory message or if they are flipping the bird, then that's one thing. But if all they're doing is saying Kyrie sucks or serenading him, the athlete has to be above this. Yeah, like, I agree. Like I said in my sports minute uh, on the ETV Sports Minute, you know, play, they need to be above this. These are players that young kids look up to. Mm -hmm. So, what kind of message are you sending to them? Well, there's one argument I would make for that. Unfortunately, in the world of business, especially in sports, we're not really the morality business unfortunately anymore now i'm not saying it's right by any means but unfortunately athletes could give two you know what's about fans anymore it's very rare that you see a Derek jeter in today's sports world where he goes and he hands the ball to a young fan or has stops and talks to a fan or just does anything to make a kid's day that doesn't exist anymore in today's world of sports the athletes are too focused today on where's my next dollar coming from where's my next endorsement deal coming from what am I doing to get my social media uh, platform out there? They don't care about kids. They just don't. Well, I think you should care because then you have a situation with what's going on in baseball where the sport's not being promoted. It's being it's almost being considered an afterthought. It it, it, it may take time, but it's slowly but surely going to happen. We've spoken before, Nick, how, how baseball is dying. 
I think basketball is going down a direction right now that is that is troubling, whether it's something like this or, you know, like what we've spoken about before, you know, the whole load management. I think the load management situation in basketball is – not talked about enough as to how damaging it could it could it could hurt basketball. It, it it's ironic because do you know who started the whole load management situation? It was was not Le, was it LeBron? No, it was no. Kawhi. Yeah, I was That's gonna right, say yeah. I, I wasn't sure whether it was LeBron or Kawhi because I remember it, Kawhi's name was associated with load it, management a lot. It was originally with the Spurs. When he was okay, up yeah. for the for the large contract numbers, and then they and then the Spurs couldn't get to him because his medical team was hiding him from the Spurs, and then it became a whole situation like the Spurs just said, "I'm done with this. I don't want to pay him 200 million plus," and that's how he ended up in L.A. with the the Clippers. Well, and Toronto winning a title with the Raptors. Well, right, I missed that. You're right. He went to Toronto, then he went to L.A. Right. Hey. He paid off more in Toronto than he's, than he's done with the Clippers. I mean, has there been a team that's been disappointed more than the LA Clippers? Oh my gosh! Look what there. they gave up. Look what they gave up for all those stars. Not, yeah, I mean, that Paul George uh, and that might be worse than a Billy King trade. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, no offense. No, that's pretty funny actually. Uh, oh, but okay. Paul George is the biggest disappointment of an All Star I've ever seen in the NBA, and that's me saying a lot because I've seen a lot of disappointments. But what is Paul George done? All he does is go on social media and say, I hate everybody or I hate the media. How about go out and win a big playoff game? And maybe don't put up bad performances and have people call you pandemic P for a couple of years ago. Oh, God, that was hilarious, too. <laughs> well, I know who you know who really put that in the spotlight. That was Levitar, Johnny, who really put that out there. <laughs> It was yeah. funny for a long time because <laughs> until Paul George can prove himself, he's going to be playoff P until he gets it all yeah, put, no, put together. Can't, can't argue that uh, for sure. But as far as, as Kyrie goes, I'm you know I say this as a Knicks fan. I, I maintain this to this point. I'm so glad the Knicks never got him. And I'm, because I know that they were always rumored to get him. And I was like, keep him far away. And then, you know, I had some Brooklyn Net fans that were saying, oh, we got Kyrie, Johnny. How do you feel? And my response was, back then and what my response is today is the same you guys can have them i'll tell hank what i said before I am, the show. first I'll, of all before you do i just want to say as a also a nick fan i second johnny's opinion <laughs> I, I will i will deal with the missing the playoffs if i don't have to deal with a headache like Kyrie. now i have a headache right now in randall i've had headaches at in the in for the better part of the 21st century cough, cough step on marbury and eddie curry <laughs> Uh, well, Marbury, the first – I mean, when they got him, though, it was, it, the first the first year it was okay. but True, true. And then it just, like, spiraled downhill from there. But, uh, yeah, that could be – Yeah, and then he went off to China, and that was the end of his career. That was the end uh, of it, yeah. But yep. I was telling Hank something before we started mm -hmm. about Kyrie Irving. And as a Ned fan, originally when they got KD, the star point guard that they needed, I said, oh, I said, this is great. We're going to – we finally have a one-two combo. We're gonna make it places. And now I like I said to Hank, I'm like, I'm having buyer's remorse. Like in the it's worst way on possible. It. Hold on it. I know it's you full buyer's it. remorse. No. Yeah. Hey, Nick, that's okay. I've had buyer's remorse too. Cough, cough, uh <laughs> cough, cough, John Carl Stanton. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm I, mean, I, I still like Stanton, but like like at the, the more I think about it now, I'm like, eh, he was a luxury, not a necessity. I mean, at this point, the way that contract looks, you're going to be paying that out even before he retires because I don't know if he can stay healthy at this point. Yeah. Cough, cough, Bobby Bonilla. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, man. But, oh, man. <laughs> so as far as the rest of the series goes, so we're all in agreement. We think this is six or seven games. It should be at least six because I There's think it's no going to be. no way the series ends in less than six. Yeah. No, no one's going to win a game on the road. It seems like at this point, the Nets don't lose at home. If Robert Williams is healthy, I think that I, I have more faith in the Celtics chances, but we know how that we know how that's working. With All I know is if, if they lose, I wouldn't be surprised if KD and Kyrie just turned on Steve Nash. Said, this is your fault. We're, we want you fired. That's what they do to coaches and, now. I know. And that's that is so ridiculous because. Like, I mean, like I even say with Aaron Boone, I think there's only so much you can blame the coach or the manager on. Yeah, but I like really 
but like Steve Nash, Aaron Boone should have never been the manager of the team. What what coaching experience does he have? Same thing with Steve Nash. Steve Nash has no coaching experience. It's the reason is it's like the catcher in MLB. They always get the manager positions first. The point guards. Get I'm going to say a lot of what I said before on both Aaron, on Aaron Boone, and this applies to Steve Nash too. too. You can acknowledge, you can say that he's not the problem, but you also have to acknowledge that he was never really the right manager to begin with. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. That's what I've been. That's what I said last year. Like when when I saw on Twitter, so many Yankee fans were like, "Oh, this is Aaron Boone's fault." After they blew, I think it was the game they blew against Boston when they wasted that Domingo Herman start. Like so many of them were complaining about Aaron Boone. I'm like, uh, "Excuse me, did you not look look at the top and see how the team is corrected?" Sorry, didn't mean to go on a Yankee. That's okay. No, that but makes perfect sense. You knew I was going to go there at some point with regards no, to the Yankees. No, 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 but Hank, it, it makes perfect sense because if you look at the Nets and the way the dysfunctional is more the word I'd like to use here, James Harden was the biggest mistake they probably ever made. That's right. That's absolutely right. And then you and then you shipped him off to the – now, make no mistake, I don't necessarily think it was bad in the long run for the Nets, but – Philadelphia, I think, is a bigger threat than people realize. Like, I'm not saying they're going to beat the Milwaukee Bucks or anything, but I think they're, like, somewhat of a threat with James Harden currently. That's that's if he decides to show up and play, of course. Well, the one thing I, I will say is I think that trade, first of all, was lopsided in the favor of the Nets with the amount no, that they gave up. It probably is, but if Philadelphia goes on some sort of run, then it's going to be, like, then it's going to really look bad for the Nets. Well, yeah, I mean, and I would I would say this. I think the Sixers are under more pressure than the Nets to win. This I agree. Year. Totally. One, because I mean, James Harden. Well, let's put it this way. If the Sixers don't beat the Raptors in this opening round, I could see Doc Rivers getting fired. Oh, uh, gosh. Doc Rivers. Well, he's already been fired once before. It wouldn't be the first time we've seen Doc Rivers get twice. fired. Actually, yeah, two or three times. I, if look, you look at it, you, you've got Joel Embiid, who's the you know the – Clo probably the MVP of the league, either him, Jokic, or uh, Giannis. He won but the scoring I, title. He won the scoring title for a big man, which hasn't been done since Shaq. Um, their biggest thing is going to be is uh, Thibel, who's one of their better players, um, is not vaccinated. So if they go to Toronto, uh, when when they go to Toronto, uh, he can't play there. So you're going to need uh, your other guys to step in. But yeah, you know what though? The and I just want to say one thing about that because it's I'm getting frustrated with this now. You, we said that this is the biggest chemistry and team sport that there is. Yeah, you're affecting the team as one guy, one guy who won't get it, and now you're affecting your team of possible chances of winning a game. They don't think about that when with, when they make the, their choices, though. But I'm just saying, like we talk about team chemistry. Imagine, like when we were going through the MLB situation and we still don't know when the Yankees go to Toronto I know we keep going back to comparisons but we, there are two players that are not vaccinated and we think one of them is Aaron Judge yeah no, it's, just think about that yeah but I, I don't know and one other thing real quick to wrap up the Nets what do you think what happens on Wednesday night game two you know you, the fans they're not gonna they're not gonna uh, stop uh, with the Kyrie serenading or something I think it's only going to be worse you just it, but he's gonna get a. He's gonna be a, the booing that he's gonna get is on the level of Pedro in Yankee Stadium. Uh, that's uh, I would go with that for sure. Uh, I think that the fans are actually gonna have momentum going into Game Two. Well, we got to him already. Let's get to him even more. Let's heckle him even worse until he implodes and he passes out. Oh, that's the thing. I mean, he still scored eighteen points in the fourth quarter in Game One, so. Uh, if but you, but everyone's choosing uh, to ignore that though. Well, got to be fair though. I mean, if, I agree with you. As, as mm -hmm. much, look, I, as much as we want to talk about the uh, the the double bird, I mean, you got to be fair. I mean, he had an unbelievable game. But I, I, if you're in the Nets here, I mean, you need one of these other guys. You cannot keep just relying just on Kyrie and, and KD to be taking the majority of your shots. I mean, like I said, you need other players. And again, I don't know what kind of factor, even if he gets into a game that Ben Simmons is going to be uh, not Defense. playing for a full year. They're already talking about if he does play, it's going to be very limited. Defense. So, That's really yeah. what I think it's going to be at this point because the, what he doesn't get credit for is he actually is a great defensive player. People don't give him that regard. He can block shots. He can stay with your – They could have used that on Sunday. Well, <laughs> easier said than done, right? Yeah. But you see that in a lot of these series now, how high scoring they've been uh, early on. 
But I want to give you one more factor, and then we can talk about the rest of the NBA playoffs. When they played the Cavs with this stupid play-in tournament, which I'm getting annoyed with, where the 7 plays the 10 and the 8 plays the 9, do you realize that if the Cavs had Jared Allen, the Cavs are were probably a much more dangerous team at that point in time? They could have lost that game. Yeah. So that's Just saying. It's a very, that's all, it's a very fair <laughs> point. I, I People don't realize how great Jared, Jared Allen was as a net and how important he is to the Cavs. Talk about now, a, talk about someone in the middle that can block shots. Well, that's why the, you know the Harden trade I think ended up being really a disaster for for Brooklyn because you gave up so much of your valuable players that you had to get him, and then the big those big three together only play for eighteen games. Yeah, but they kind of made it up in trade value when they got Curry, and we're talking uh, about his brother, and we're yeah. talking about and they got a big man, and they got draft picks. They kind of made it up in turn. Not in, not totally, but they got something back for him. Yeah, I think his brother is one of the better shooters in the NBA. Yes, he is. But I mean, I don't think you realize though, Jared Allen and Karis Levert, how great they were when they were Brooklyn. Well, they had a young nucleus, but the only way they could get to the stars, which is what you were saying to before, is you have to trade one at least one to get to where you want to be. Now, um. I think the days of LeBron James and courting stars is over. I think it's ridiculous what they used to do back in the day. It doesn't. But, it doesn't work anymore. No. Even if, though, I, if I have to see one more decision TV program where they spent all this money so that he could make his free agency decision on a TV show, I'm going to go nuts. Well, that that will never happen again because social media now is used so much that they'll just do it on social media. Well, it gets leaked before it gets to TV. Well, that, that's that's it too. Yeah, but. I, don't, I think these days of recruiting stars and like that, I think it's over with because I don't really see it working anymore. And look, actually, look, look, and actually, last year was Giannis, who was the big star, and then they had valuable guys like Middleton st- step in and, and help out. So that's why I said you need you need a star, obviously, but you don't, but a valuable role player and your entire roster to contribute. That's the biggest problem with my Knicks is we don't even have number we don't even have a number one yet. We have. A good player. Well, the problem is you had a history of guys four or five years after their prime coming into New York and playing with the Knicks. Carmelo Anthony, even though like he was still really good as he was, he was a little bit past his prime in some aspects. Well, it was that, and then Stoudemire. It worked the first year with Stoudemire, but then he broke down, and then you had the uh, the. The, oh, don't get me started with J.R. The J.R. Smith situation. <laughs> that, 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 that suspension uh, in the Celtics series, just, uh, they never and they never recovered from that. They had you know a magical run last year, but it ended up really being a fluke. Well, I, mean, I think I think we've got potential going forward. I mean, the young players that you see now, they definitely are, are there. But I mean, they they need another star. I mean, we need a point guard. I mean, it's saying that for 22 years now. I mean, we need a, we need a, we need a damn point guard. We haven't had one since Charlie Ward. The problem is when you wish for something from uh, Trophy winner Charlie Ward. Charlie, <laughs> that's right. I was going to say when you wish for something from uh, James Dolan, uh, don't expect it to happen in, in any near future. Well, keep him away. Let, let unless let we're Leon... maybe talking about the Rangers. Right. That's what I said. <laughs> keep him away. Let Leon Rose. Let let those guys World Wide West. Let them do what they need to do. Just stay away. That, More that, like that... Wild Wild West. Yeah. Well. Well. I'm, we'll I'm sorry, we'll I, I I could get triggered, but you're not wrong. <laughs> well, of the yeah, yeah no, you're right. <laughs> but you know, we other series. The other series, real quick here, is uh, Nick Morganson joins us here on on the show. Uh, we talked about the Sixers and the Raptors. Uh, they're up one zero, and the the thing with that series will be when it goes to Toronto. What happens when you know the Sixer players can't? travel with the team because they're not vaccinated to be something to watch there. Uh, but Nick, what, what else, uh, what else so far through the first few days of this NBA playoffs, what has uh, caught your attention? Well, that Toronto didn't play as good as I thought they were going to. Um, I don't know. Philadelphia, like we said earlier, if James Harden is going to play, like we know he can play on the court, then they're going to win that series because he will lead the team on his back on his own with Joel Embiid. If you think about it, and it's nowhere near the comparison I'm about to make, 
But James Harden and uh, Embiid are kind of like the untraditional Kobe and Shaq back in the day with the Lakers. If you think about it, where James Harden is going to lead that point guard, he can score at will, and then he can throw that ball down into the paint for Embiid, and he can just dunk the ball like Shaq did half the time. But you're not going to get that all the time. If they could get that inconsistency, they're going to sweep the series because Toronto looks confused out there. Yeah. I, I would I would agree with that. I'm also looking at in the in the West because I, I I think the East I think I think Milwaukee still has a very good chance to come out of it and but in in the West I think it's it's Phoenix I think it's Phoenix out of the West right now. I think the biggest key with Phoenix right now the only thing that I think they could derail Phoenix is if Devin Booker or Chris Paul go down. Well, Chris Paul's been hurt like all season with this. I think it was like a thumb injury. I think he was dealing with. Yes. Which- if you know the NBA, well, if you don't have your thumbs, you're in trouble. Let me let me ex- piggyback on what Johnny said. I they better hope that Chris Young or Chris Paul. <laughs> what did I say, Young? <laughs> they better hope that Chris Paul. <laughs> it's I'm okay. Sorry, you're you're, th- you're thinking baseball. It's all good. <laughs> you're right. You're right. You're right. We're gonna get there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the thing that I'm hoping for is that Chris. Okay. <laughs> the thing that I'm really hoping for is that Chris Paul already used up his bad injury luck during the regular season. Because if you've seen the pattern, he always has that one bad injury every single year. Am yeah, I wrong? That goes, like that, go, that goes all the way back to when he was with uh, New Orleans. I mean, it goes all the way. Houston Rockets 2018 Game 7 Western Conference Finals. Well, that, that team was an abomination and was going to lose anyway. They kind of deserved it. But... They prob you're right, you're right. They probably did, but that was probably the closest anybody came to disrupting the Golden State dynasty. That's true, but if it wasn't for seventy five thousand threes they took in that game, they probably would have won that game if they took less. Oh threes. yeah, like I I I could have sworn Houston turned into a bricklayer's business that day. It, it was really bad. Like <laughs> could you could you could have just put a target on the basket. They were gonna hit the top of it, over it. But that's neither here nor they there. All the John Starks, basically. Yeah. Oh, sorry, John, to bring up those memories. <laughs> hey, so I, but you know, we were good then, so I, I guess I have to. Deal I know with we that. would, I we would do anything that. to get those next teams back. You and me uh, both, for sure. But with if Chris Paul, and this is an if, mm-hmm. if he's healthy and Devin Booker doesn't get into his own ego and start screaming and yelling at people, because Devin Booker in the next couple of years is going to be one of the stars up there with Giannis with Embiid. Those that's really the big three guys. And I'm not talking about on the same team, but those three guys are your next generation talent. Uh, the days of LeBron James are done. I don't want to hear LeBron James anymore. I would, I would add Luca to that list. And speaking of Dodgers, you know, him not playing in that opening game against the jazz. Uh, you saw the impact there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's a, that's a big deal. I don't think people realize that. And, you know, if he's going to miss any significant length of time, I mean, that's a bit, you know, calf strains, those are very, very tricky to come, to come back from so quick. And even if he does make a quick rebound, you don't know how effective he's going to be. If Luka doesn't play, it's over. I'm just telling you that right now. If he does not play any games in this series, they're going to get swept. They can't survive. They can't survive. He's not playing today, right? I don't think so. I think he's de- out again. So if he does not play, oh, this series is going to end very quickly. He's the guy that holds that team together. So they got to figure it out if they can't get him. And I think I saw something that there were some Knicks actually in that series. They were scouting, uh, you know, whether it was Jalen Brunson or, dare I say, Donovan Mitchell of the Jazz. He's, he's, not coming to- to- he's not coming to New York. Are you kidding me? They're, they're trying to sell you that he's going to come here. He's not. I know. I mean, Let's I would see. like. Let me go out. Would be all right, but I will like, believe somebody bec- a superstar becomes a Nick when I actually see him put on an orange. When I either see him put on an orange and blue uniform, or when I see him have a press conference saying, "Conference saying, oh, I'm excited to be here. I want to thank so and so, so and so for making all I, this possible." All right. I would say I would say the latter, Hank, because the the former, um, you know, he is a Met fan, so he is wearing blue and orange in that regard. But <laughs> but I was going to say, do I need to go down the list? LeBron James, Dwayne Wade, Chris Bosh. Let's see. Ray Allen, I even heard. Kevin Durant. Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving. Uh, keep Kyrie away. I'm fine. I'm, no, but I'm just saying, like, how many names did we hear coming to a Knicks uniform uh, and, to be the Knicks? It, it never happened. I know. No, I mean, it really hasn't happened since Stoudemire and Anthony. Those were the last two. 
And by the way, they got burned by the Stoudemire contract because, again, he yeah. did himself in. That was a hundred million plus contract law at the time, which looked large. Not Five now. Five years, million. Yeah. Well, no, and no, for sure. But and I think the Knicks are finally starting to do it the right way. It took them about. It took them a long time. But but I look at all these series. I don't yeah. really see a lopsided series, to be quite honest. I think the only one that I can see being lopsided, I would probably say the Suns Pelicans. Suns Pelicans, I don't think is going to be close. May, maybe New Orleans steals one if they're very lucky. And yeah, notice I said very lucky. I would also say Milwaukee probably sweeps Chicago. I, I that's another one. That the I Pelicans think. should not even be in the playoffs. I don't disagree. It's great story. It's a great story, though. Don't get me wrong. Zion was out all season. They had injuries. Everything that could go wrong went wrong, and somehow they made it in. But you're ten games under five hundred. No, they, there's no way they sh they should even win a game against the Suns. But no. how do you even get uh, – because of this dumb playing tournament that Adam Silver – you know how we have good old Rob Manfred? We should have good old Adam Silver next. Oh, hey. he's more confident than Manfred. That's I, true. I, I know, I, that is true, and I like Adam Silver, but some of the things that have been happening late recently make me start to question him. And like, and I did, oh, no, you, I'm not saying either of you are two are wrong, but I would give anything to have a commissioner in one of my favorite sports like Adam Silver. I, I don't, And I agree with you. Adam Silver is probably my favorite on this list because if I had to put up with Roger Goodell or Rob Manfred or Gary Bettman, of oh, all people. Oh, I think – oh, the, that last name you just mentioned, I think I despise almost as much as Manfred, but – that's you know what the sad part, part is? I'm not the biggest hockey fan. I would take Bettman over Manfred, and that's me yes. saying a lot. No, I, I would totally agree with you on I that. I don't I, – you know, it's funny. For as much as I've despised Bettman over the years, I don't disagree with that either. It's hard, and I can't believe I had to say it. But mm -hmm. just to go back to this playing format, it doesn't work because you're putting in a 10 seed, and if a 10 seed wins like you just did – I could have imagined that. It, that it, it point, okay. one, it, you know what I would say? I I would be okay with it if they shorten the season, and I think they have to. And I, they're not going to shorten the season because of money, but they should shorten the season because if Adam Silver, who and I did my Amanti moment on this too, a couple of weeks ago after the Board of Governors meetings, he came out and said that he's very that one of his biggest concerns is the fact that the star players are missing a portion of games, whether it's because of injury or COVID or load management. And I'm like, well, if you want to fix that problem, Adam, you the, the thing you've got to do is you've got to shorten the season. Now, you wouldn't totally eliminate the load management days, but you would reduce the, the odds of them happening. And, you know, we've seen stories. How many times do you watch SportsCenter and you see a story of a, of a young kid holding a sign looking forward to seeing a visiting road player, and that road player doesn't play because of the, load, of, of the fact that he's got the load management situation? Steph Curry. Ste but – I have to give credit to Steph Curry because Steph Curry made it up to the fan considering that he, he saw the story. Was the was the Curry thing, though, because he was injured? I think he was injured at the time. I was, yeah, I think that was an injury, but nevertheless, I mean, that's... that. He still of, made it up to the fan. Well, yeah, well, that's, that's how great... That's Steph who Steph Curry is. is as an individual. But yeah. the problem well, you're going to run into... One of my favorite players in the NBA. Right, and if you even if you shorten the game, let, let, let's say... How many are we? 72, I think now. 72 we're 82, games. We're 82. Or 82? We're 72 last year with the COVID year. All right. So it was 82. It, even if they shortened it to 65 or 70, you're still going to have the same issue because players are going to take a, what is that saying? You take an inch to take a mile, essentially. So they're going to do the same thing. All right. We'll just take five to seven load management days instead of 15. They're just going to take half the amount of days. It doesn't matter. These players don't care. They're paid. Well, there's got to be something when the CBA runs. Run, Actually, uh, and up. Johnny, I gave you one other thing as well that you could do. Mm -hmm. You have to put out when you're going to do, if you're going to do a load management day, you have to put it out in advance so that the fans know not to show up to a game if that's why they're showing up. That's not, and that's not a crazy thought either. Because then you could say, oh, well, I'm only here because I'm looking to see this visiting player. Okay, they're not playing. I'm not going to buy the ticket for that game then. That'd be smart, actually. And real wow. quick, what, the one of the series I talk about real quick before we uh, wrap this up: the uh, how about the Timberwolves beating the uh, the, the Grizzlies with Anthony Edwards, Carl uh, Anthony Towns? There, you know, really no pressure from on the Minnesota's angle uh, uh, angle of things. But Memphis when, is under pressure, though. That doesn't surprise me either. 
And I'll tell you why, because Minnesota, again, that's another team that has more talent than, than they're being given credit for. And while Memphis is strong, I ultimately think Memphis will probably come back and win the series. But if they lose, I think it's probably because that's a team that doesn't really have the experience to have gone through the NBA playoffs and whatnot. Minnesota is actually becoming a nice young squad. Like, yeah, especially being led by a uh, cat. The Timberwolves, yeah, got to give them credit. And hey, oh, Rod must there's be another excited. one, Nick. <laughs> what and they were talking about possibly being a Nick, Carl Anthony Towns. It's never going to happen. Gonna he just happen. signed. He just signed a large contract anyway. No, I know, but I mean, we were. We yeah, were... in order for that to, to have happened, ping pong balls would have had to go in our favor. You mean like when they were trying to get Zion and hoping that the ping pong balls fell their way? That's hey, exactly what I'm well, talking about. <laughs> let's be fair, though. They might have actually lucked out with that. Well, yeah, because of all the injuries. Barrett. Yeah, with the you got injury. the better Duke guy. And there may not, and if Zion ends up leaving. I mean, there's stories out now He's about. He's not leaving. He's not leaving. He's not giving up anything right now. Well, did you hear? Did you hear the report though? That they were talking about in New Orleans that he actually thinks that he's healthy, but they think that the uh, Pelicans are not going to play well, him. Well, so the reason that report came out was because yeah. video leaked. Haha, ha, ironic. A leak. What a surprise. I ironic that he was dunking basketballs before in warmups, but yeah. he wasn't really playing. So, hmm, dunking basketballs, not really playing in games. Something doesn't add up there. It's 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 like the Ben Simmons thing. I mean, it, it's one thing to be doing it in a practice court, and you're not really going the full drills yet. It's and it's so late now. Even if you come back, you know how effective can you really be? I that's, that's, that's a tough that's one. A tough, that's but a, but you brought ahead. up about Memphis as well. There's a lot of pressure on Memphis because they've been building over the last couple of years. And now with Jaw leading the way, who is probably also another dark horse young star coming in the next few years as well, the NBA should be proud of their young stars. We don't hear them being talked about as much as they should be. Memphis should win this series, but I wouldn't be surprised if Minnesota, with Cat and with their other guys, I think Andrew Wiggins yeah. and Edwards, they should win this too. It's really an even series, but Memphis should win. No, they should. But again, I'm also saying that because they have a lot of young stars who haven't really dealt with the playoff pressure before, that might be the be what leads to their downfall. And remember, you know, Morant missed a lot of time before the playoffs started because of his knee injury. Mm -hmm. So you, if that that could be a factor as well, but it would also be pretty cool because you don't see many many seven two upsets in in the NBA playoffs. So that would be a pretty cool thing. But so there are some very cool, some very interesting storylines, and of course, some very dramatic ones like we talked about with Kyrie. We'll find out what happens. Game two with the Nets and Celtics happens on Wednesday night, and uh, we'll find out what the crowd what the crowd does to Kyrie, and we'll find out if the Nets can rebound, and we'll see what happens with all these other series. But, uh, Nick, I want to thank you for uh, joining us, a resident Nets fan. So uh, before we go real quick, what do you think? So how confident do you feel now with game two uh, tomorrow night? With the Nets? I, I mean, the Nets are pretty good at bouncing back off a loss. We've seen that all season. Now – can Kyrie Irving get out of his own way? That's going to be the massive thing for tomorrow. I mean, if he can get out of his own way, they definitely will win game two. I have no doubt in my mind. And if they win game two, then that puts them on the fast track with the home games coming up to put the series away. But if they don't win, I think the series is over. All right. Well, we will we will find out soon enough. But uh, thank, uh, Nick, thanks for joining us. And yep. we will catch you on uh, Beyond the Bench and empty the bench as well. Thanks, Okay. Nick. Yep, not a problem.